Now, the Republican Party that you first got involved in became a Republican, I'm going to argue, became from Reagan's day, you know, very much uh, sort of moved towards the country club Republican, uh, people who perhaps were not particularly conservative, um, pretty middle of the road. And then suddenly, into all of this in 2015, is the man from New York, uh, the businessman, uh, the really out there Donald Trump. Uh, I guess he must have been a hell of a shock to the Republican Party. Oh, <laughs> uh, I would say that's a very good British understatement. <laughs> Definitely. Not only a shock, um, and having been an outsider who also had been an outsider playing their game with them because he had the money to do it, but to be able to pull off what they couldn't pull off. For example, Paul Ryan, he said yeah. Trump didn't pay his dues and Rand Paul had actually gone to Trump and said that um, Paul Ryan is sabotaging a chance to change the Af Affordable Care Act. I mean, in other words, all that kind of stuff, a all of, that a resentment. A lot of sign warfare. I mean, I'm struck, Jenny, you know, I, I, I come to CPAC and I, I regularly right. back and forth and I've got to know the President Trump pretty well. Um, and I'm, I'm struck that you've now got a Republican Party very... I mean, there are lots of Ron DeSantis fans, of course. Right. But even the Ron DeSantis fans still admire what Trump did as president. The problem is, and you're the psychologist, not me, so many people say, well, you know what, the Abraham Accords were great. Uh, the reducing corporation tax for American companies, massively out of date. Um, did a lot of good things in America. But it's his behaviour, it's his language, it's the aggressive uh, appearance of Trump sometimes that puts people off. Now, it doesn't bother me tuppence. I'm perfectly happy right. with the way. But that's not the point. The point is you can have a base of 41% of Americans who love him, but you've got to get a few more than that to win the presidential election. And if he was to run again, and, and this debate goes on about his personality, uh, his temperament, uh, you tell me, is he fit to do this again? He's absolutely fit. And there's a difference between a personality and temperament, which I was able, because that was a big discussion um, between Hillary saying that he didn't have the temperament. Yeah. And there is the presidential temperament tool that I actually asked Trump to take in 2015. And what came out of it because we're born with our temperament. We don't develop our temperament. We develop our personality. Right. We develop our behavior based on cultural influences, norms, etc. But Trump's temperament is one of action. It's not, it, and it is no different than John F. Kennedy's, than Lyndon Johnson's, than Bill Clinton's, than Ronald Reagan. His res results fell right in with that because he's a problem solver. And even JFK, when people uh, recounted how he handled the job, if it was something yesterday, he didn't want to know about it. And if it was something tomorrow, he didn't want to know about it. He was dealing with what the issues were today. Action this day, Winston Churchill used to yes. say when he was over the, yes. over the river here. Yes, exactly. And that is Trump. And, and his personality, uh, it's New Yorker, it's quite loud, it's quite out there. And that won't change. No, it won't. But Eleanor Roosevelt said that great minds think about ideas, average minds think about events, and simple minds focus on people. And I feel psychologically, I actually am very concerned. We call it Trump derangement syndrome. Yeah. But I can't really understand how people get so worked up in hating him because for that kind of, um, you don't know him. Well, you listen, see his behavior. I had plenty of hatred here because I dare to challenge the established status quo. So people feel uncomfortable when somebody challenges their worldview. And now we've got the FBI raiding Mar-a-Lago and all the rest of it.